<laughs> we have to talk about the University of North Carolina football program, don't we? Uh, in losing to West Virginia last night in the Duke's Mayo Bowl, UNC looked like the team that cared less about the game, which I think is worse than anything we can we can talk about when it comes to the X's and O's. Now, we, we can talk X's and O's, and we can talk about how it looked like they got lost in the details, uh, and we can talk about how it looked like uh, you know they gave up too many big plays, too many momentary lapses of focus. Uh, we, we can talk about it. But overall, I think it's much worse to just be the team that cares less about the game when you're when you're in the game. That cares less about the game once you're in the building. I completely hear what UNC fans are saying when they try to downplay the loss by saying, "Oh, you know, they had the they had all the opt outs. You know, we we had all the the players that were hurt, and it was obvious everybody wasn't invested." And I'm sitting around going, "Okay, I get it." I do think that's a knock on your program, though. Choosing not to play a week before the game, like opting out two weeks before the game, three weeks before the game, that's that's one thing, right? That's a business decision when you are removed from the competition. That is a business decision when when you don't have the other team across the field. But being in the building, Having the competition right there and not getting caught up in it is concerning. Their heart rate just stayed low. The Tar Heels heart rate, as they give up a 75-yard touchdown, is blink of a hat, right? Or blink of an eye, drop of a hat. As soon as the game got started, boom, big play. North Carolina was chilling. Special teams touchdowns, North Carolina. was. You shouldn't be chilling in those situations. You're sitting there watching West Virginia run back the open kickoff and going, dang, they scored already and our defense hasn't even touched the field yet. It's it's. This is what we're dealing with here? Here's Mac Brown on his overall thoughts, the head coach of, uh, of UNC, overall thoughts on the loss. We knew to win the game. We had to uh, win the turnover ratio. We lost it 3-1. We need to win the game. We had to win the kicking game, and they had a punt return for a touchdown. And we just had one kickoff that was decent. And we actually had a, a punt bounce into one of our players, and it was one of the turnovers. Um, defense played the run pretty well. Um, their quarterback did a really good job of getting a couple of big plays in the passing game. I thought Connor competed. I didn't think we helped him enough. Uh, we didn't give him enough protection. Um, so um, felt like again, um, game should have been closer. You look at the, the stats, and game should have been closer than it was. But, but credit to them, it wasn't. Credit to them, it wasn't. Credit against you, it wasn't. Like, I don't. I understand, and I want to be clear on this. I understand that modern bowls that are not in the college football playoff, you're going to have to deal with the challenges of opt-outs, transfer portals, coaching movement. There's nothing you can do about that. That's just the way it is. But the, the, the players that put on the uniform, the coaches that stand on the sideline during the bowl game, whether it's playing for pride, whether it's playing for another win, whether it's playing to audition for your job the next year or audition for your job somewhere else, like whatever the motivation is, as soon as the, the game starts, there has to be like your competitive instinct has to kick in. If you make a bowl game every year, what are we looking at? 52 games in your career? Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to pass on one of those because your quarterback opted out? You're just going to say, ah, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to chill because one of your position coaches took a job somewhere else? You're just going to say, I don't know, the tight ends didn't rush back from their injuries, so I'm just going to sleepwalk through this one? There's a finite number of games you get to play in college. UNC looked like they wasted one. And, and that is – as big of a demerit on your, as big of a black mark on the permanent record of your program as anything. I don't care if you're trying out all third stringers. Those third stringers should be scratching and clawing and fighting for for everything. One one of my favorite plays of the year, and I, by the way, I I don't necessarily uh, like have any reason to even be paying attention to Texas A and M. Texas A and M put out a, a, a 
uh, kickoff team when they were up like 25 in a game of all walk-ons. Yeah. All 11 on the field were walk-ons. And they flew down the field with a reckless abandon, forced a fumble and recovered it, and the place went absolutely bonkers. I don't care if you're the last walk-on on the bench, if you're the, the next future number one overall pick. If, if you're at a program that gets it and, and the clock is, is ticking, you're out there scratching and clawing to win a football game, and it didn't feel like that at times for UNC. And that right there should drive Mac Brown crazy. Now, going off what you just said, speaking of Mac Brown, how many times have we heard throughout this season, think about after the Virginia loss, the mm-hmm. Georgia Tech loss, mm-hmm. NC State loss, where Matt Brown has said, <laughs> mm-hmm. we did not have them ready to play. Everything that you just mentioned, as far as your competitive nature has to kick in, no matter what game it is, is that what he's talking about, as far as building up the competitive nature to go out there and play one last game, no matter what bowl game it is? Yes, and and you know... When when I'll, I'll put it in this term, when Urban Meyer, and by the way, ready ready for a, a story here. When Urban Meyer was with the Jacksonville Jaguars, he was doing uh, a terrible job at being an NFL coach. Uh, but one thing he brought from his days in college was what he called like winners and losers battles or something like that. It's not winners and losers was something about it. And what that meant was at any point in in the practice, horn goes off. And, and two people, right? Offensive tackle, defensive end. Wide receiver, defensive back. Linebacker, running back. One-on-one drill. And the whole team gathers around, and it's just one's going to be a winner, one's going to be a loser. Now, in the pros, that's kind of stupid because it's like, hey, what are you going to bench the guy that loses? He makes $13 million. He's going to play. Uh, but in, in college, it's just to establish that your program and your players love competition. I didn't feel that from UNC in the in the 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 Duke's Mayo Bowl. I didn't feel that they loved competition. Now, like I said, from a gameplay perspective, they got got by the details, right? That that's where they got caught up. Connor Harrell, the the quarterback, wasn't quite on the same page with the offense as a whole. Maybe understandable in a guy's first start. Uh, special teams gave up multiple big plays, which is going to be a problem. Defense had lapses that led to big plays by West Virginia. It it really was, you know, just momentary lapses. Some might say it was a communication thing. Mac Brown, after the game, was asked if there was a communication problem. No, it, in fact, uh, it was a, a great opportunity for us to uh, have the coach to quarterback communication and coach to linebacker safety communication. It's the first time we've ever done that, and uh, and I thought it worked pretty well. I mean, there were a few times that Connor would say, say it again or, or something, but because uh, we hadn't done it before, but I, I thought it helped. I thought the, the fact that we used the uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, videos, the iPads on the sideline will be a great help in the future. We didn't get to practice that because we, we didn't have a setup for it at home or Providence Day um, in, in time. So I think all that would be a help. Um, the crowd is what it is. Yeah, give, give West Virginia credit for their crowd. I mean, they, um, they're talking bad about ours. I thought theirs was great. That, that was, uh, I was impressed. No communication problem, then it was just an execution problem. It was just a focus problem. It was. It wasn't. To me, communication problems happen when guys are playing alongside guys they aren't used to playing. That's where, like, hey, Cedric Gray wasn't out there to organize things. There was a communication problem. If there wasn't a communication problem, if that's the bill of goods you're trying to sell me, then it was an execution problem. And guys knew what they were supposed to be doing and weren't doing it. Or knew what they were supposed to be doing, they were trying to do it, and they weren't physically capable of doing it, which is a problem in and of itself. Be pre- I'd be pretty disappointed if I were a North Carolina fan. And I think that is is a sentiment felt around that fan base. 